welcome to Holistically Speaking. I'm Morella DeVoe, your host. Our mission with Holistically Speaking is to be the avenue through which the voices of holistic health reach you at the time you need it most. And my guest today is Sabrina Joy Milbury, and we're going to be talking about drumming for healing, mm -hmm. which I just absolutely, I've been in drumming circle with you, and I personally love the experience but there's not much I can say about it. So I'm <laughs> thrilled to have you. Well, thank you. So that we can bring this to our guests. So welcome, thank you for, ha for coming. Well, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I really enjoy drumming. I brought some of my drums with me today. Mm -hmm. And you know, I just really want to let more people know about drumming and the benefits of drumming. And so I <clears throat> have gotten into a habit of asking my guests the story of how they got to doing what they're doing because I always find that there's something really fascinating something you know there's usually really great stories so. right and I love the stories we all have such great yes. stories so tell us how did you get into drumming and holding drum circle good question I had never touched a drum never picked up a drum prior to going to Peru in 2006 yeah. um, and Going to Peru was really a life-altering experience for me. It really yeah. was, it like really pushed me outside of my comfort zone. I am born in July under the sign of cancer, so we like to be at home, you know? And to go in a, to a foreign country with people that I didn't know yeah. on some journey that I had no idea what was happening. One yeah. of the women on the trip um, brought her drum with her, and she carried her drum all the way through Peru. Wow. And she played it and she was playing it and her and I were both singing, which was something that I had not done, like just burst into spontaneous mm -hmm. song ever. You know, I always sung in a choir, right. but not like put myself out there, like here I am, here's my voice, here's my song. Right. And she's drumming and I'm singing. We had this very amazing, sometimes very difficult but very opening experience going through Peru, Peru and towards the end of the journey we went to an island in Lake Titicaca mm -hmm. and one of the days we walked up the mountain and mountains in Peru are so cool because they all have stairs yeah you know? <laughs> <laughs> all yes. these stairs so we're walking up these stairs and it's a long ways up and we get to this beautiful, it's like a bowl, and on one side was what was called Pachamama, mm -hmm. and the other side was Pachatata, the two mm -hmm. mountains sort of were the guardians of right. this bowl. And Lynn and I decided that we were going to stay in the bowl while everybody else climbed Pachamama. And we were sitting there, and we were talking, <clears throat> and Lynn was playing her drum, and she was doing a little singing. We sang together, and we had a little snack. We had a little nap. And then Lynn got up and walked away. And she was just standing there looking out. And you can see the lake when you're up here on this mountain. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting on the blanket looking out also. And I could hear a voice over here. And Lynn turns around, and she looks at me, and she goes, she wants you to play her. And I said, I know, I can hear her. She goes, well then pick her up and play her. Yeah. And the her that Lynn was referring to was the drum. Mm -hmm. And we refer to drums as her. This is her. Mm. It's very female. It's round, it's a circle, it's like the womb, it's like the moon. Mm -hmm. So they're female. Uh -huh. um, and so I picked up that drum, yeah. and I had never played a drum in my life. And when I picked up the drum, it was like it was like coming home. Yeah. And it actually it still moves me to think about it I can because say that. Yeah. I went, oh, here's my voice. Mm -hmm. Here's my voice right here in this drum. I loved the drum so much. I didn't have a drum. Mm -hmm. So that was in October of 2006. Lynn lived in Maine. Now, just about any time somebody tells me, let's go to Maine, I'm, I'm with them because I love Maine. 
I was born there. And so she said, well, you know, if you come to Maine, I do workshops and people get to make a drum. And I went, okay. So I went to Maine in January of 2007 and I made my first drum. Now I don't have that drum with me today, um, but I made my first drum and mm -hmm. truly I was in love. Yeah. Somebody asked me, now what do you want to do? I said, I want to have a drum circle mm -hmm. and drum on a regular basis with other people. Yeah. And you made both these drums that you brought? I did. I made both of these drums at different times. And mm -hmm. you know, it's really, it's so wonderful to make your own drum. You can play any drum. You don't have to make your own. Mm -hmm. But when you make your own drum, there is a piece of you that's mm -hmm. in this drum. Right. And these are big drums. And they're both, they're different. This one is um, deer, mm. they're deer skin. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And this one I that I brought for you to hold, Morella, <laughs> that is it's a buffalo. Beautiful. It's buffalo. This is a buffalo hide, yes. It's and gorgeous. This is actually a really pretty heavy drum mm -hmm. um, because the buffalo hide is very thick and it has a lot of weight to it. Yeah. When you make these drums, um, if you turn them over, you can probably see a little bit that inside the frame there's writing. So each time you make a drum or I made a drum. Mm. I thought about, you know, what the what the hide represented. Right. And Native Americans, you know, all the animals have some kind of a meaning. And what the hide represented and what it represented to me and what I was putting into this drum. Yeah. And they're dated. So I made the Buffalo on May 6, 2007. And I made this deer drum in October. October 10th, 2009. And I've heard that um, humidity and dryness, that sort of thing, affects them. How does it affect that? Them? Yeah, it does. It affects them a lot. And right now, they, their voices are really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's probably too loud on the mic, but <laughs> their voices are really beautiful because it's dry. Mm -hmm. And so the skin tightens up, and the sound actually oftentimes goes up in pitch when it's drier and it rings more. Gotcha. And as it gets more humid, um, the, the sound of the drum gets duller. That's, yeah. that's how I would describe it. Gotcha. And this buffalo drum, sometimes it basically doesn't play in the summer. <laughs> she yeah. just is not talking. <laughs> <laughs> she says, it's too hot, too humid, leave me alone. The I'm humidity gonna... <laughs> is really bugging me. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know how you, all, you feel like sort of like that when it's exactly. really humid? Well, that's how she gets. Oh, funny. And yeah. it's so appropriate in terms of you know the energy of the animal. Right. Um, yeah, and it, they're going to slow down. And, and this, mm -hmm. is a, this is a deer one. And all the hides react differently right. to the to humidity. Mm -hmm. And then there are some drums that are made with synthetic skins. Mm -hmm. There's um, one drum, it's a brand, it's called a Remo drum. Yeah. And it's a synthetic hide, so you can use it all the time. Right. I mean, you can play it out in the rain, or you could bring it into a sweat lodge, yeah. and the humidity won't affect it. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So. Tell me about the drumming circle. So you started making <coughs> drums, your own drum, and decided I want to have a drumming circle. So for those of our viewers who might be watching and listening and have never been to one, what does that look like and what happens in a drumming circle? Right. Um, well, I do a drum circle using um, a Native American format and Native mm -hmm. American traditions. now. You know, I'm obviously not Native American, mm -hmm. um, but I have been had some training from what from my different teachers mm -hmm. who have been trained by Native Americans, and so we use that kind of a format. Um, we're creating, we're going into a sacred circle when we do a drum circle. So we do things like. Uh, on the table here in front of us today, which you probably can't see, but I just brought a mm -hmm. simple altar. Right. Um, and we begin to create the sacred space by using mm -hmm. things to create an altar. Yeah. Um, and we use candles. And also, 
I won't light it because I don't know how VPN <laughs> feels about yeah, I'm not sure. Smudge, but this is actually um, smudge, mm -hmm. and this is white sage. Yeah. And in the Native Americans in this country would have used white sage or cedar or mm -hmm. sweet grass, which mm -hmm. I also have sweet grass with me today. Gotcha. It smells really good. Mm. I don't. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh, this is lovely. And and you know the sweet grass is a is a native plant. It actually grows in New England. Um, and the Indians in New England made baskets out of it. I actually had never seen a smudge made like that. Yeah. Out of sweet color. Okay. And um, so we would <laughs> smudge a space to clear it. Yeah. You know, it, it changes the energy. And um, we would light candles. We would set an intention. Yeah. And um, in our drum circles now, what we do is we actually set a group intention. And I'll, I'll talk about that a little bit more in a mm -hmm. little while. Um, but we set a group intention, mm -hmm. and then we call in the directions. Yeah. And one of, there's a couple of things that happen when you use a drum. But um, when you start with the drum, like if we were going to call in the directions here, the drum is saying, I am here, mm -hmm. I am listening, and it calls in the spirit guides, and it um, it catches their attention. Mm -hmm. The drum catches their attention. Mm -hmm. So um, we would call in the directions, and the way that I was taught, and different Native Americans do the directions in a different order. Mm -hmm. But the way I was taught um, is that we start in the east, mm -hmm. and so you know we'd call in the guides from the east. Yeah. And then we would do the south and the west and the, and north, the north, above and below, and all of our relations. Yeah. And then, so what we've just done is create this sacred space. You know, like a container. It's for... a container. Yeah, we created a container. And then, in once a container is set, we start drumming. Mm -hmm. And um, there's different ways you can drum in a drum circle. In our drum circles, we mostly drum a fast journey beat. Mm -hmm. We might start out slow, like I was just drumming yeah. slowly, but then the, the journey beat is gonna be very fast. It's gonna be like this fast. Yeah. So that people could actually journey. Mm -hmm. And so... I won't do that very long, because no. I'll be journeying. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so, and people, mo almost everybody is drumming or using some sort of yep. rattle or some sort of instrument, yep. right? Yep, you can, we, I have extra drums, some people have drums, and I mm -hmm. also have extra drums, and I have rattles, um, so, you know, maybe somebody's rattling. One of the people who comes to drum circle regularly, she loves this rattle. Mm. This is her favorite rattle, yeah. and she's magic on the rattle. Oh, lovely. It, her and the rattle have a relationship. Yeah. So, you know, some people will be rattling, and some people will be drumming. Yeah. And sometimes there'll be somebody who maybe they're just sitting there and mm -hmm. being yeah. with the, the drumming and the rattling. Yeah. You don't have to know how to drum, right. and you don't have to know how to rattle. Right. You know, um, to come to a drum circle, I think that there's a few things that are important. Um, that you come open yeah. and willing to experience the experience and be part of the community. Yeah. Um, I think that's really important. And so as we, obviously, you know, we, we called the, the show Drumming for Healing. Mm -hmm. So how do you see a drumming circle facilitating healing? Mm -hmm. and, you know, right. It could, I'm sure it could be on many levels, but how would you? Yeah, there are that? many, many levels. Um, <clears throat> Actually, let's, I want to just back up and talk about the mm -hmm. intention because one of the things that we discovered without really even thinking about it is a few years ago when there was that big tsunami in Japan, mm -hmm. we had a drum circle right after that. And we were going around and everybody was speaking their intention. Mm -hmm. And we realized that we all had the same intention and that was, you know, for healing, for the people affected by the tsunami and you know they were all the same intention so that drum circle we had one intention mm -hmm. and what happened of course was that 
even though I'm sitting here with my drum and you know you're sitting over there with your drum and we're all having our individual experiences that the visions that we saw and the energy that we created was all the same mm -hmm. it was all aligned yeah so now we usually do drum circles that way where we right. set one intention what, a group intention a group intention and what I've discovered is that by having a group intention everything mm -hmm. that you want and I want we all we always get it mm -hmm. but fascinating in in journeying with the drum you know shamans have been using drums for tens of thousands of years mm -hmm. to uh, facilitate healing in their people who come to them to teach people how to live yeah um, and for a long time in our scientific world, it was sort of like, oh yeah, that's just like airy fairy. It doesn't really work. Well, what they've discovered, scientists have discovered as they've studied shamanism more and more and the effects of sound mm -hmm. is that that journey rhythm that you do with the drum actually alters your brain waves. It actually yeah. alters your brain waves. So what happens then is it allows you, and this is what shamans have always known, to go into a different place. Mm -hmm. Your body's still here. Right. The great thing about a drum circle is that nobody's doing anything to you. Right. It's all you. You know, so your body's still here in this space and you're safe. Yeah. Um, but you can go to another place and you can begin to create relationships with animals and other humans that you see in these other spaces mm -hmm. and ask your questions. Yeah. And in asking the questions that you have that you're walking around with, mm -hmm. um, you begin to uh, facilitate your own healing or letting go of right. what you need yeah. to let go of. Yeah. And, and it's all, it is all metaphor, mm -hmm. you know, because if you go down on a journey, a bear, the bear isn't talking to you like yeah. I, like you and I are talking, right? Right. <laughs> so right. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's all in metaphor, and so that's one way you can you could do the healing um, is that you yourself can actually go on that journey and ask the questions that you have. Right. And so I would imagine that you have stories, some of your favorite stories of people's experiences or your own experiences in drumming circles, like the Peru story. So <laughs> <laughs> Right. I love my Peru. Peru was great. Yeah. Um, what have you seen people experience in drumming circle? That that's, that's a really good question. Mm -hmm. um, I'll just speak right now for myself. Um, a lot of times when I'm drumming, all of a sudden I will start singing. Mm -hmm. And um, I, the words that come through, it's like these words come through me and then out. And I think the drum actually allows that voice to what's been yeah. in here for a long time that I wanted to share. But the drum actually breaks down the barriers so that I can actually do that. Right. My favorite experiences is when um, we get all done with drum circle and after we're all done drumming and we drum until we're done. Right. You know. Until it stops. Now. Until it stops. Um, and then we have what we call a talking stick because in Native American tradition, um, the person with the stick is the one who talks and nobody else talks. Mm -hmm. And it's a way of creating safety. So you get to talk. Yeah. And nobody else gets to like fix it for you or right. anything you just share. And so at the end of drum circles, we, we pass a talking stick and people start sharing their experiences. Mm -hmm. So my favorite thing about drum circle is how much our journeys were so similar. We saw the same mm -hmm. animals, we got the same messages, but yeah. we were all sitting in our own spaces with our own drum. Right. And so what that shows to me is how connected we all are. And nowadays, we are all mm -hmm. so hungry for connection. Yeah. We're looking for a way to be yeah. connected. And the drum and a drum circle really keeps bringing home to us, yeah. oh, 
you and I are really connected. Right. We are really on the same journey, the same path. Yeah. That's beautiful. And, you know, if I, asking you the question, and I'm listening to you, to you talk about the experience in drumming circle, um, or even just drumming on your own, I th it makes me think of, oh wait, what's my experience? What, what did I, um, how would I describe it? And I think that also individually, um, it kind of brings you to a place of quiet, that, you know, kind of journeying place or, yes. um, you know, I do hypnosis, so I, I could almost equate it to that hypnotic place where there's just you're hearing all of the drumming and you're in this circle, but it takes you to a place of very profound stillness inside where, at least for myself, I just feel like connected to who I truly am. Yes. Does that make sense to you? Yes, it does, and that's my experience. Like when I've had uh, a journey or been in a drum circle or just like spent five minutes journeying, I feel very centered. Mm -hmm. Very grounded, like that experience of, wow, my feet really are on the ground. Right. And at the same time, I'm really grounded and centered. Yeah. I feel really connected, yeah. you know, to all that's much bigger than me. Yeah. And it's such a great experience to have that grounded, yeah. centered, connected. Yeah. You know, you can, I can, I can see like that light coming all the way through mm -hmm. me. Yeah. And that's a, a, a wonderful, wonderful experience. Right, yeah. Well, and you know, just to kind of bring it to more mundane terms, if nothing else, given the amount of stress and busyness that we live in our lives, you know, yeah. just having this moment where all you're doing is drumming, kind of following your lead, you know, there's nothing else that you need to do but be mm -hmm. there and be present. It's just extraordinary. It yeah. is. Yeah. It really is. A, it's like a present. And we do a drum circle monthly. Mm -hmm. We have a drum circle on the third Monday of the month. It was just an easy way to remember when we're going to do it. Yeah. And sometimes we'll switch it around if the full moon is really close. Yeah. You know, we might do it on the full moon. But it's generally the third Monday of the month, generally at my house. You know, we, yeah. we gather at 7 o'clock um, in the evening. We'll talk for a little while, have some tea, yeah. go into circle, and when circle's all done, then we get to have chocolate yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and tea and talk again. Yeah, and who would you say, who might be watching this, who would you say is, you know, should think of coming? Everybody. Everybody who, um, really, who wants to be connected to themselves, mm -hmm. you know, connected to their own wisdom. Mm -hmm. um, they want to create a bigger community, a bigger circle to play with. Yeah. You know, right now, mostly it's women who come to a drum circle, but it's not a woman's drum circle. Right. You know, it is open to everybody. I've been in drum circles with children. Yeah. You know, um, especially if they're like 10 and up. Yeah. When they can actually begin to um, focus long enough to be in a circle, you know? Yeah. So I think anybody who really wants that deeper connection to who they are and, and what they're here for. Yeah. And do you help people make their own drums? Is that something that you do? I not? do not do that. Okay. I don't know how to do that. And um, the woman who lived in Maine, who I made my first drum with, Oh, and this one, too, the big buffalo one. Yeah. Um, she doesn't live in Maine anymore. She's way out in New Mexico, so I don't think we're going there. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm actually in the process of finding somebody that I can connect with who yeah. knows how to make drums. There's a whole yeah. kind of, it, there's, it's a science right. behind it. And if you looked at these drums from the back, they're actually very different the way that they're, they're, oh, yeah. the webbing is. They're very different. So these are two different people taught, mm. showed me how to make these drums. With very different technique. Very different technique. Gotcha. So I know that you have some resources that you want to show our, and I'm wondering if we might be able to, <laughs> I think we just lost our helper for a moment. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay. Well, there he is. We would love to show some resources to our viewers. All right. <laughs> um, and 
because you have a, some, well, obviously, to join the drumming circle, um, people should email you directly to find out the yep. details. And you also have workshops that you do, so. Right, um, I do workshops from time to time. I just did a workshop, um, it was called Introduction, Introduction to Shamanic Journeys. And that's a really fun workshop. Yeah. It was like four hours. And I actually took people through those steps to learn how to do journeys to the different, what's called the lower world and the upper world. Gotcha. And who to look for and what kind of questions to ask. Um, so I do cool. do workshops, but if you email me, then um, I can add you to the drum circle mailing gotcha. list, you gotcha. know, the email list. And so people can also follow you on Facebook, mm -hmm. Sabrina Joy Milbury, and you have a website, justdancinggardens.com. And I also want to show people the books that you uh, wanted to share with them on the next screen. Um, you have quite a collection of books that you obviously like, so can you tell right. us a little bit about, you know, what are your favorites, like, what's, we probably don't have time to stop on each one of them, but. Okay, well, um, one of my favorite books on that, they're all my favorite books on that list for different reasons, but the book called The Thirteen Original Clan Mothers by Jamie Sams mm -hmm. is one of my favorite books. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a book that I've read nine Times. Wow. Um, partly because my friend and I led workshops for three years based on the 13 original clan mothers. And they were 13 month yeah. workshops. So I love that book. It's very beautiful, beautiful, touching, mm -hmm. pertinent wisdom. Right. That touches, will touch people on many, many diff different levels. Um, for people who uh, want to start creating a deeper connection with animals, for example, because mm -hmm. uh, there's so much wisdom that we can learn from animals. You know, right. there's so much there. You want to deepen your connection. Um, I would recommend Medicine Cards by Jamie Sams and Animal Speak by Ted Andrews. Excellent. Those are really great books and. If you want to know more about shamans, mm -hmm. The Way of the Shaman by Michael Harner is like the book. That's the one. The Way of the Shaman. Yes. So specifically to get into shamanism. And yeah, and to understand more about shamanism, Michael yeah. Harner is an anthropologist who has been very instrumental in, in actually saving and preserving yeah. um, the, shamanist, the shaman wisdom right. all over the world. Right. So, Sabrina Joy, we have about one more minute or so. That was fast. It was so, so fast. <laughs> so is there anything that you feel like, oh, my gosh, I haven't gotten to say this or that you would like our viewers to know? I, I just want people to know that really um, what I've learned in my journey with the drum is that this gave me voice, and I've really deepened all of my connections to myself mm -hmm. and my own wisdom, but also to um, like the animals and the plants. I've always had a very deep right. intuitive wisdom, you know, in connection to Mother Earth and all of the green people and everything. But it's actually allowed me to deepen it and deepen it and to connect with the compassion and love that is available and that I can then bring to my drum circles, my workshops, and individual clients. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I would say that, um, you know, that connection to yourself, you know, that I think is really the cornerstone of any sort of healing is just, you know, being in tune with yourself, um, kind of finding that place of silence and peace. And then importantly, what you bring is the sense of community, of shared experience that can be mm -hmm. so transformative. Right. So yeah. I think what you're doing is wonderful. Thank I'm you. on your list, and I yes, haven't been able to come again. So um, I definitely want to come to your circle right. again. So thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for joining us. I hope you found this as interesting um, and fun as I do. And I will see you next time. Take care.